the recording then. Hello, welcome everybody. This is a new human experience podcast and tonight is September the 5th, 2019. The topic tonight is self-heal. I've thought of many, um, I would say, different names for this. However, I think self-heal is probably the best name I can come up with. Um, so to, to preface all of this is that we are infinite souls having a human experience. And illness or disease is a part of the experience. Now, I'm saying this not that we sign up to, to be ill. But the thing is, we, we kind of do sign up to be ill. It's, illness is actually a message that our body gives us. And the message is that there is a disconnect somewhere within our um, physical body and our spiritual body and our emotional body and also our overall um, understanding and mind our consciousness so there's this disconnection somewhere and whenever there is a disconnection then it manifests as an illness it can be um it can be a serious illness or it can be something that is just in the background it could be just a dull pain that just wouldn't go away or it can be something that is more chronic. Um, it could be irritable, irritable bowels or something like that. However, whenever you have something that is like a disease, then you know that that's a message from your body. Because we, we as eternal souls, we, um, we are spirit. We are not materialized we there is no matter until we decide to incarnate and take on a body and um and then this experience of having a body is um it's something that as an eternal soul we're not used to and so there's a lot of i would say um misunderstanding of how our how to communicate with our body in such a way that instead of the, the body giving us illness in order to let us know that we are, there's somewhere we are out of alignment. That's why the body is in pain. So it's trying to, it's, it's like a, a stop sign. It's a, it's a red light for us to just stop and look for the courses. And the and right now I'm saying this is that um, our body actually there are basic functions. Um, for example, what I, what do I mean by basic functions is if we drink water, we drink lots of water, then we use the bathroom. That's like everybody, all body does that. So things like if we consume certain kind of food, then uh, if the the food is um, resonates with our body, then we are more energized. Whereas there are food that does not resonate with our body, then we it actually takes more energy to digest the food and deal with the food. So that would actually depletes our body. So these are basic function. So when I say basic function, I mean that basic function according to our consciousness. However, there are act, actually our body is capable of a lot more. And I cannot emphasize enough of how much our body is actually capable of. Because this, this body that is with us right now, um, with, our, um, with us on this journey of, of growing our consciousness, of having different experiences and all that, this body can actually accompany us all the way until our consciousness gets to the point where 
it does not need a body in order to experience anymore. So it's a long way from where we are, as we know it, as um, our consciousness of the body right now, up to the way when we actually at the point where our um, soul does not need the body and we can become, we, we still would uh, have a consciousness, we still would be able to experience. However, it will be a very different kind of experience. And that is actually what our body is capable of. The, um, the way we understand our body now is actually a very diminished, diminished function. And right now our body is, um, our body actually was designed with 12 different, I would say, um, lineage, DNA lineage. We, and right now only two of those DNA strands are active. And the two that are active is really the reptilian and the draconian um, DNA strands, because those two are the ones that, that uh, is more suitable for the, the, I would say, the beginning part of our journey. Because on Earth right now, the beginning part of the, we are just at the beginning part of the journey. If you look at the history of how old the, um, the Earth itself, the, all the elements of the, the galaxy in this galaxy, versus the history of humanity that is in this um, functioning in this earth is actually we are just at the beginning we're not even we, we may be a dot if the whole history of the galaxy is one line we are actually just a dot at the very beginning and so what our body the 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 consciousness and the capability of our body right now is um, it's really commensurate with the level of our conscious consciousness and there has been places uh, there's been times when people have experienced um, spontaneous remission and the doctors would just scratch their head and it's like whoa it's a miracle how did that happen how come some person would be would be in you know, stage three four five i don't know i am not sure how many stages of cancer there are they may be at the last stage but somehow they have a consciousness shift and their body would just be able to heal itself um maybe not overnight however it would take maybe just a few weeks for the body to actually heal itself to the point where it the body can function more normally. So that is actually what our body is capable of, is to be able to heal itself. And um, right now we, um, our regular, I would say quote unquote regular consciousness is so low that that part of the functionality of being able to heal ourselves in a very short period of time is not available to us yet. And however, whenever we um, make a consciousness jump, when we, whenever we can make that, that change in our consciousness, then that kicks in, that part of it kicks in. And so what our body actually is, is a piece of um, very sophisticated software that helps us that gives us the experience that our soul has signed up for when we are when we sign up for the human um, experience. So that's actually what the, the the body is for. And there actually has been now when I say the body is a piece of um, technology, a program, and all that, I am also implying that the body is actually um, is no body. It's as it's an illusion, it's, it's simply a piece of software, very sophisticated, complicated software 
and there are actually some already some scientific um, I would say study that that um, supports this for one thing is that um, there's been study that pretty much 99.999 percent of body of our body is, is really just space now it's not really space because space is just a word that we use that scientific mind use to um, put a place holder for things that we don't understand that that science have not been able to crack because we science is not quite quantum yet we can't see into the quantum yet um, at least the science that I'm aware of we can only the, the science that I'm aware of right now can can only say that most of our body most or I should say most of the cell each individual cell that makes up the whole body when you look at just one single cell 99.999 percent of it is simply space and only 0 0.0001 of the percentage of that cell within that cell is matter is something that we can actually see and be able to pinpoint and they actually have been studied that if we collapse all the spaces and only collect the, the, the matter part of it, of our whole body, then the matter part can, own, can actually fit all of our, the whole body can actually fit on the head of the pin. And that's actually how um, immaterial our body actually is. And so I'm not really kidding that I say, when I say that our body is actually an illusion, it, it, is, it is actually a, a piece of software to, and all the, our senses is actually programming to help us create and maintain this illusion that we're actually experiencing something that it's it's kind of like the uh, the matrix movie when um you know it's it's actually when you you are eating a a piece of steak it's just um it's all just signals that tells us that how to um recognize that this is a piece of stick and when we put it into our mouth all that sensation is simply different, um, different signals to help create that illusion that we are actually biting into something. And this is how we experience. That's actually what an experience is. It's just all electrical impulses that is helping us to create that illusion. So then getting back to our body, how, the, how then can we use our body and heal our body in such a way that it actually would give us a, a feeling of like, like heal itself so that it can actually heal itself from whatever illness it is. Um, a few things that I want to mention is that the first thing is to note is that our body is always listening to our thoughts in our thoughts which is part of our consciousness is actually what drives our body and and so that's why our body is always listening to our thoughts listening and let and kind of fluing in on okay this person's consciousness is at let's say level one so then the body would function as at a level one However, when the person um, is able to make a jump and get to, let's say, level two, then the body would be able to function at level two. And at level two, there are more things that are available for the body to do in order to heal itself and also to give the, 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 the eternal soul that is embodied in this body a different experience. So 
how we um, feel internally is a great way for us to start to, or I should say it's a key for us to start to say no to our body that we have a, uh, we have a consciousness jump. And the first thing is, I would suggest, is to know that the body is always listening. So how you communicate with your body, and when I say communicate, I don't just mean spoken words or even internally spoken words. Communicate can mean just a feeling, a feeling of gratitude um, and being able to feel fully alive and fully focus on and being in the moment. That is a very different feeling than when we are distracted and we are, our ten, attention is not on what we are doing. So those are the things that we can start do and communicate with our body to let our body know that um, our consciousness is actually moving into a direction that will allow the body to function at a different level. So feeling of gratitude, feeling of love, the feeling of accepting of ourselves and also of our environment, of the people that is around us. All of that is a big signal for our body to be able to function at a different level. And all of these things are actually starting to unlock the other DNA strands that is in our body. So the, the other DNA strands in our body can actually start to help the body to heal itself. And when we actually participate and be able to work with the body, for example, like um, there, are, there have been actually instances where people um, know that they are being, that even though there has been no symptom, but they actually know that something is wrong with that, their body. So when we pay more attention and be more mindful of being in the moment and being less distracted by whatever it is that's outside of us, when we start to listen in and communicate with our body, our body can actually tell us whenever it is that we are out of alignment. And this is something that you have to, to um, practice at first. So it's very easy when you are fully congruent, then you actually, if you test yourself, you muscle test yourself, your body would actually be, um, it, it would test strong. However, if you say something, but you think something that is completely different from what you say, you're confusing your body. So that's when, if you muscle test your body at that, or shortly after that, after short, shortly after you say something, but meant something different, that incongruence, your body would actually test weak. So the, and that's just one thought maybe, or two thoughts. Imagine doing that all day long. Imagine being in a job that you don't like, but still having to push yourself to get there and do things and deal with people that somehow you don't want to deal with. You have a judgment about them. And still, because of circumstances, you still have to, you still have to deal with them in a nice or civilized way. So these incongruence actually start to weaken our body very um, minutely. But if we do that every day, 24 seven, then it does not take too long for our body to get the message that, oh, this, that, that this being um, incongruent is really um, messing our body up. And, and so when you start to notice these things, when you start to notice these things and really let you, and work with your body and say, okay, so this is, 
um, yeah, that I have to do this. And kind of know that okay, when your body gives you signal, when your body gives you a pain, then take the, the time to actually stop and reflect and ask your body, so what is going on? And just when you are, when you are um, in a meditative state, just open this dialogue with your body and say, okay, you feel this pain, let's say this pain in your shoulder or wherever it is. And you start to ask your body, so this is what I'm feeling. What is the message? And give that peace and allow that the, the time for your body to communicate with you. It may communicate with you by um, giving you a memory of something that you've done or something that somebody said to you that somehow create a, a, um, a response in your body. So those would be the things that your body was, would uh, communicate with you. Or maybe you would open this dialogue in meditation. You may not get a, an answer or an answer that you're aware of at the moment. But when you notice that in your daydream or actually in your sleep, the dreams may give you more of a clue. So when you are fully invested in communicating with your body, your body would be actually able to tell you what is going on. And, and when you have this open communication with your body, then pain does not need to be there anymore because pain is just the body's way of getting your attention. And when you give your body attention, then your body don't have to give you pain. Of course, um, provided that when you get the, the, the answer, when you get this, that you actually start to take steps, do things to correct, then your body don't have to give you these uh, message as pain anymore. And I've already mentioned that um, your body functions is dependent on your consciousness. When you start to grow your consciousness, then your body can actually function at a higher level. And when you and also when you actually listen to your body and be in touch with your soul's purpose, because this is not the this is not your mind's journey, this is not your body's journey, this is actually your soul's journey of having certain experience, um, human experience. So when you start to listen to what your soul is communicating with you as well and start to make adjustment in your, in your life in order to align yourself with your soul's journey, then your soul does not need to use the body to get your attention because the soul and the body, they work with each other as well. Those, those are the ways that you can start to communicate and start to heal yourself. Not at a, um, not at a level where you are just relieving symptoms, not just healing certain pain, but actually get to the point where your body would be able to start age differently and be able to heal faster. So those are actually all of the things that your body is capable of. And actually, if you, um, if you dig deeper, your body can actually regenerate itself, even regrow body parts that's been, for some reason, for whatever reason, severed. There has actually been documented cases where people have grown back limbs. Not everyone can do it. However, the people that actually work with their body, 
and be able to step beyond the the programming that you cannot grow your limb back and when when you can step beyond those limitations of well, what we know our body is capable of and be able to ask and really work with your body to give you the experience that you actually need it, you want it, then yes, growing back limb is not far-fetched. It is some, it's coming. It's already been done. There's already been um, documented cases of that happening. And as our human consciousness growing, then those are the things that starting to come back. And there are actually cases where um, it used to be that we only lived maybe like 60, 70 um, years of age. And now it's actually been like 120. It's not that rare anymore. So the, the process of being able to um, change our aging pattern, that's also coming as well. And there will be, there's actually at some point, when we fully remember that we are spiritual being having a human experience, we can actually um, choose to not die. And that's something that is coming. I can't tell you when it's coming because um, it's really not my decision. It's decision of the collective. When the collectives consciousness grow to the point where these things are supported then these things will be available to more and more people so that's actually all i would like to talk about in terms of self-heal and the possibility of healing ourselves <laughs>